Hello, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. Something a little bit different for us today. We are on the way to watch some non-league football at Dorking Wanderers. We thought this international break, we go and watch some international football. <clears throat> Sorry, change that. National League football and we'd switch things up because we're fed up of international football and we felt Dorking Wanderers is a team that has taken the non-league footballing world by absolute storm. So... Let's head over to Meadowbank and see what they've got in store for us. Mark White has managed to take his Dorking Wanderers side from all the way at the very bottom of the footballing pyramid to the National League. He's had 12 promotions in 23 seasons. They've only been going since 1999, so that makes them 25. They are a fantastically well-run club. He is the man that non-league football truly needs and deserves, and he has taken that footballing world by absolute storm. So we felt, let's head over to Meadowbank. They're playing top of the league, Hemel Hempstead, today. They are fighting for promotion. Dorking Wanderers, though, are absolutely not where they want to be in the league right now in the National League South. They find themselves in mid-table, hoping to get their promotion challenge back on track. So we're going to go and see if they can do that today against Hemel Hempstead. Let's see what Mark White and his boys have in store for us. If you haven't already, make sure to drop a like on the video. We're aiming for 50 likes today. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe because we are on the road to 3,000 subscribers before Christmas. Me and Ben are out here in the Surrey Hills on our way to Dorking Wanderers versus Hemel Hempstead. Now we've already hit a bit of a snag in our journey. We put on the sat nav, set it to Meadowbank, and thought we'd be there in perfect time. Turns out we're 20 minutes away. Meadowbank we went to is someone's house. Ben doesn't quite know how he's managed it. Oh, I just put it in the sat nav and clicked the first one to come up, and that's what it was. The people of Dorking decided to have a giant cock as their uh, monument for the town. Look, it's not what you think, all right. I've done my research. Dawkins, well known back in the day of the Roman Empire for producing high quality table poultry. We're on the hunt for parking. We're still well on time to be fair. An hour till kickoff. Some of the Dorking Wanderers Ultras are making their way down to the game. Up the Dorking! It's an M&S car park. It's not just any car park. It's an M&S car park. It's looking like it's going to be a cheeky little pay and display job for this one. So. Probably one of the pricier non-league days for parking you're going to find. Now after that parking problem was solved, where Ben realised he couldn't quite open his door against that massive white concrete wall next to him, we decided we'd grab our stuff, head on into the stadium and get a feel for the game nice and early. Ben made sure to bring his trusty golf umbrella, just in case that rain was forecast, made its way over to Meadowbank. Right, we're on our way in. Ben's, uh, he's parked up successfully after that absolute shambles of a parking situation. He's got his huge umbrella as well, so he's equipped because it could rain. But we're heading on down to the stadium. Meadow Bank, the, the new home, fairly new home of Dorking Wanderers. Ben used to play for them back in the day, and they, they used to play, where they used to play, Ben? Um, up and up the road, the road is, but it's like behind Denby's isn't it? Yeah, yeah up, by, up by Box Hill. So they've kind of moved more into the centre now. So we're just going to go and find our place in the ground and Ben is starving. So we're going to have to get some food. We are in. Welcome to the Meadowbank. Ben cannot wait to get himself something out of the club shop. What are you going to get Ben? I don't know. Home kit? Yeah, I'm more about food than this, to be honest. Right, you want to do food first? Right, we're going to go hunt for food. We'll be back. Meadowbank's a decent little stadium. Holds up to 3,500 of that is seated and Ben's got a game for us. What is that? Right, how many have you seen already? Already, I. I can tell you right now, when it comes to spotting represent hoodies, Ben won that one. That's my only spot straight in front of us. Time to look at the menu. What are you getting? Four, four. Burger, with some fries. Menu's actually quite good for a couple of grams. Yeah? No, Bob Rock came out. The two oh, yeah. pounders, please, with rice. On one, please. On one, please. Anything else? Big thank you once you get to our back. Fine, Right, sauce time. At the home of the Wanderers. While Ben drizzled his food in barbecue sauce, we went and found some seats to try it out. 
Right, food test time. Ben's finally got it. As you can see, very hungry. Here we go. Let's have a look at his food. A few bites there already, son. Go on. What else you got? What'd you give it? Not bad for non-league food. Brilliant. Really? Yeah. Price weren't too bad either. To be honest, it was like tenner each. It's pretty good. As we went out to watch the warm-ups get underway, the weather had different eyes. Got some shocking weather going on. We're under the umbrella. Luckily, Ben bought his golf umbrella. There's even Premier League quality down here at Meadow Bank. It's Chelsea boy, Josh Brickham. Right then, as the warm-ups were coming to a close, me and Ben felt that we'd end undercover because, as you'll see in a minute, the rain was absolutely relentless. And you can see the physio running over and Mark White trying to stay dry. Obviously not. Almost an impossible job. But you can see he's absolutely got the Dorking Wanderers fans on strings. They love him. Hemel don't. And that's the away end for today. I have to say, it's pretty cool considering what it looked like at the end of the game. So I wonder if some made the early journey home. But Carter leading the team out. The non-league Jack Grealish. You can see Rutherford there, the number 10 as well. An absolute key player in this Dorking side. They're rebuilding though. They lost a lot of players at the end of last season after relegation. But here we go. They start off. On the attack, pretty sharpish. Floating the ball into the back post. To no avail. There he is, Carter, though. He was going to be absolutely influential to everything Dorkin managed to do this afternoon. An early effort leads to a corner for Dorkin. What can they do from this? They cross it to the near post. It's away from Hemel. Again with another cross. Hemel again looking to clear the ball away. I'm not sure if Mark White realised that this would be a strategy for Dorkin today. But they were... Crossing for fun, right and left, all day long. Little foul there on Carter, he's not too happy. That sort of set the tone that he would be absolutely instrumental and a player to watch for Hemel. There goes the ball out of play. The amount of footballs that went over that fence, they must lose a lot of money, I have to say. On the ball, looking to make something happen. 27 years old, definitely one of the better players I've seen in non-league. As they're down the right-hand side again, looking to cross the ball in. They do. Ooh, not a bad effort at all. I don't quite know how he's not got that one on target being unmarked there. But as you're starting to see, crosses yeah! may definitely have been the way to success. I don't know what happened with my camera here. A great goal, actually. A great team goal. And there was Ben just double-checking that Dawkins were really doing that poorly because Emil Hempstead really had forgotten to turn up this afternoon. A resolute defence for Dawkins was keeping Hemel at bay. And as you can see here, time and time again, Dorkin looked to play through, and they did. Yeah! And it was a fantastic finish from the number 10, Rutherford, to put Dorkin 2 0 up inside 15 minutes. Quality bit of football on the counter attack there from Dorkin. And as you can see, 2 0, Mark White's happy. He's just making sure his keeper knows exactly what to do. How nice is the scenery there, though? Another cross comes in for Dorkin. Hemel managed to get it away, just to the edge of their box. I have to praise Dorking Wanderers every single time they were there for the second ball. They pressed all first half. And you have to admire the football. It's all on the floor. Really, really nice football trying to build up. Here's Brook in the ex-Chelsea lad with a shot. Just off to the side of the goal. I'll tell you what, he's a kid that might be too good for this level. He was he was making appearances for Chelsea not too long. Here they go, they're giving the ball away, Hemel here. Free kick for Hemel. What can they do from this one? Long range. Smiles over. Goodness me, lucky not to lose. Another ball. The number four plays a fantastic ball out to the number seven. A lot of success for him down this right-hand side. Can he work another cross? He does go down to the byline. Delivers it back post. On the edge of our seats here, waiting for Dawkins to shoot. They do. And again. Oh, off the post. Unbelievable. He moved the whole goal there. Can they work something here, Dawkins? They can't. Hemel attack. Number 10 going to try and work a shot. He does. Oh, again over the bar. He hasn't got his shooting boots on today, has he? Right foot, left foot, though. Got to appreciate that at this level. Down the left-hand side again for Dawkins. Can he work across? He does. Oh, I don't know why that one's not gone in. It's pretty much cleared off the line there from the number three. And then we go half-time. Mark White wasn't happy, though, because a yellow card was dished out to a player for Dawkins that he felt could potentially change the game. The referee admitted his mistake and said he would do better. 2-0 up, but not over the moon with that one. As me and Ben move round to admire the rest of the scenery, see what Dorkin had to offer. 
Talking fans, we're in full voice for the second half. Way too many £4 pints at half time, but unbelievable value that. Ref gets things underway. Oh, no, he doesn't. False start. Not sure what that first whistle meant then, Ref, are you? Someone found that exciting in the crowd, though. As you can see, the fans, full voice for the second half. Some of them weren't quite sure which way the game was being played, though. Spent the whole game staring at the wall. Great drum effects, though. Anyway, Dorkin looked to get things underway pretty early on. They do with a great effort there from the number <laughs> the seven or nine. It's the noise at the moment. We've come down here away from it for the second half because we were under the, under the stands cover for the whole first half because it's just been chucking it down with rain. Game's lively. I'll tell you what, it's an entertaining watch. It makes a difference compared to what I've been watching recently in the Prem. It's a complete different style of football. Dawkins looking to work another opportunity. It gets cleared away from Hemel though. They do, however, pick up the second ball again. Oh, a scuffle down the edge of the box. The 30 cuts inside. Can he work a shot? He does. Back post. Finished by Dawkins. They're 3 0 up. They're absolutely flying. Hemel just haven't turned up here. Ninth place Dawkins. 3 0 up. Ben's noticed something about the other team though. Uh, number 12 has um, slime green under armour on uh, when their kit is well, essentially the same colour as the ground that they're playing on. Um, but he has done well to match his boots. Must give him that. Yeah, definitely not a kit combo for me with the boots, but. Look, he was definitely one of uh, Hemel's better players. And they look to build here on the right to try and get themselves back in the game as they do. The number eight crosses the ball. <laughs> Dawkins, number 30, just making sure there the ref knew he was being grabbed on that occasion. I'll tell you what, you've got to give it to this guy. His palms must have been red raw by the end of this one. To be honest, Hemel Hempstead at the top of the league and they have not looked like they're in this game at all. Definitely one of the livelier away ends I've ever seen in my... Uh... I think a lot went home at half-time, to be honest with you. Dawkins could have got the LA's out here for this. Pressure was not being applied. So they popped the ball around the Hemel attack for a little bit. <laughs> Fans love that one. Cleared out of a long ball, though. Proper non-league. they change their kit every year? Yeah. I think it's a new kit. I think they played in uh, Atletico Madrid colours last year. Red and white stripes. Only two should not be changing their kit every year. Yeah, but Dorkin have got a bit of money. Look at this stadium. Here they go. Look, he's still forgotten to turn around. Oh, I'll tell you what, that's a weldy, mate. That is an absolute weldy. Ben's favourite player scored an absolute weldy. It was a great goal. I'm going to have to drop a clip, and I? Here he is again. Ooh. Absolutely well, he's the ball there, the number 40. But as you can see, he was trying to make things happen. They're in here, the number nine. Is that a foul? I'm not too sure. I have to say, the acrobatics are unbelievable, though. As you can see, though, Hemel were picking up the uh, their intentions to try and put one in the back of the onion bag here, and they don't. But hang on, he's being held there. The number five definitely brought his man down. Oh, it's a peno. Mark White wasn't happy, I can tell you that much. He's just been and there you off. go. The number five, the man who picked up the booking a little bit earlier on. Mark White wasn't happy. He said, ref, you could change the game on that one. Ends up getting a second yellow and off he goes in. He wasn't wrong, was he, Mark White? Ref made a mistake in the first half and look what happened. Penalty and a red card. I don't know how long's left, but if this goes 3-2, it's going to be a dramatic ending to this game. Mark White's off of his seat. He's not happy. His captain's been sent off. Here we go, Penno. Ref's taking forever. Come on. That's Little Jorginho skip is 3-2. I'll tell you what, it's going to be an entertaining few minutes here towards the end of the game. Dorking Wanderers 3, Hemel Hempstead 2. Game on. Ben, what do you make of that? I mean, it was definitely a penalty. Defo <laughs> pen. Red card? No. Red card? Uh, is it red card for attitude? The second, the second, yeah. Ref said one of his earlier ones. He said, oh, I've got to do better, mate. And then the next challenge he's had to make it up to the keeper is <laughs> sent off his captain. About time we heard some Emma Hempstead noise coming from that away in. Emma Hempstead have come alive here, you know. They've been quiet for the majority of the game, but they're back in it now and they're properly going for it. I mean, they're top of the league after all. You'd expect more than what they showed up with today. Starting to create a bit of noise in that uh, Hemel away end. Watch out for that corrugated roof, though, mate. Could be asbestos. Hemel will be an absolutely relentless here. They were really trying to push for this uh, equaliser here against the 10 men of Dorking. Mark White making sure that tactically his defence knew exactly what to do. I think that was the instruction to take it to the corner. But there's a great effort there for Hemel. 
I'll tell you what, that number 12 was definitely running things for them in the second half. At the heart of everything good that happened for him, really. Number 11 looks to work across. He does. Straight into the uh, bin, actually. There go the ball boys to get the ball. Number eight's going to throw in a long throw. He's just told his mate, hang on, the ball boys just kissed the ball. It's been the big mate. The average length of time that the ball is in play here is probably at least 10 minutes longer than the ball. Long throw, here it comes. He's told everyone he's going to throw it really long. He's saying, on your head, mate, on your head. Go on, Delap. On the pitch. On the pitch. Yeah, a couple of attempts there. I'm pretty sure he realised his long throw wasn't actually that long. <laughs> you know, geez. You Tackles are flying in all over the place here. Dawkins trying to get another man sent off. But they don't think... <laughs> there we go. Keep catching the ball. Down he goes. Another one flies in there. But look, they look to attack. The number six. Definitely not the quickest man on the pitch. Hemel have completely caught up with him. But he's taking the ball to the corner flag. Dying minutes here. Can they hang on? I have to say, though, unbelievable. Oh, he's finally turned around. There you go. His work's done for the day. They've got a result. Dorkham in that 3-2, even though they're down to 10 men. The fans absolutely erupt at the end of the game. They've got a bit through that performance. Mark White was over the moon to win that one, I'm sure, against the top of the league. It's an absolutely massive statement for Dorkham Wanderers to show they're not going anywhere this season. There he is, coming the fans at the end of the game. We're back in the car. We've had a great day out. Non-league day at Dorking Wanderers. Overall, I think it's a success. Yeah, yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I, uh, I, I must admit, I thought we were just going to go and see some normal Conference League football, like festival food, like poor quality and stuff like that. And I'm thoroughly surprised. And uh, yeah, it's been a great day out. Yeah, I, I'd have to agree. Very, very impressed with everything there. Like facilities, it's super clean. It's obviously a good place and a good environment to take people. The fans, by the way, have to give it up to them. Like, non-stop singing. Second half, when the team needed them as well, they actually really got behind the behind the, the guys playing. Mark White, brilliant gaffer. He's their Mourinho. Like, they have... He has the fans on strings. Whatever he does, they react to. He's absolutely brilliant. What a manager. And, like, what he's done for Dorking Wanderers is... Probably unheard of most other football clubs, isn't it? He's, he's put them on the map, obviously. He started and created them and has now taken them to this level. Let's rate the food first. What are you giving that out of 10? Uh, seven. Yeah, I, I reckon I'd give the food an eight. I think as a yeah. non-league ground, that was way better than I was expecting. It's just my cheese wasn't melted. The cheese, I'll say, with the food, the chips weren't non-league chips, which I was expecting. And they were more like a French fry. And then the cheese on the burgers could have been melted a little bit more. But actually, as it goes for a tenner, that's not bad, is it? Big burger and had a good portion of chips. Quality selection of sauces. And it's also apply your own sauce. No stupid sachets, which I've got to rate. If we're talking about the football, what are you giving that? Eight. Eight comfortable. I think a comfortable eight, if not more. Quality game, 3-2. I mean, you, you would have seen the footage by this point. Absolute brilliant day out. Well worth it. And the, the standard really isn't that poor. Honestly, non-league football is way better than what it gets credit for. Real good entertainment value. Talking about value, value for money, what are you going to say overall affordability? Ten. Ten, especially with the day being, what, tenner for the tickets. Like, that's a no-brainer. You spend a tenner comfortably just going out for a day. So, it's... Like, it's a no-brainer just getting down to the football. It's enjoyable. Like, the atmosphere is brilliant. Can't really ask for much more for a tenner. Yeah, tenner for footy, tenner for food, £4 for a pint. Yeah. It's really good value. Honestly, so many positives to take from that game. I think that absolutely sets the benchmark for us. Yeah. Overall, I'm going to give it an 8.5. I have to say that I'm very, very impressed, and I think it's a really good affordable day out for for people that are craving football definitely in an international break by the way way more entertaining than watching England I can tell you that much and Mark White could even be a better gaffer than Lee Carsley look we'll catch you in the next one if you haven't already make sure to like and subscribe me and Ben have had a quality day out we're close to 3,000 subs before Christmas we'd love you to join the community we'll catch you in a bit